Hello, and greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me for this fourth Sunday of Easter, May 3rd, 2020. My name is Sharon Ballantyne. I'm a minister at Dunsford United Church, an affirming ministry of the United Church of Canada. Wherever you are, whoever you are, feel welcome. I appreciate you taking time to join us at our virtual table from my kitchen table. There is room for all. Come, we need you, value you, and welcome this time we share. Our candle has been lit, and I invite you to light a candle or another light source or bring something to your worship space that symbolizes for you the welcoming and acknowledgement of the holy in our presence. Be aware of the light and love of Christ within us. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We light the candle as a visible sign of Christ, our light, who is always with us. We invite the light to fill every part of our body, energizing us with the presence of God in us. May the light of Christ shine brightly in, through, and around us. We bring that light and love to our neighborhoods and communities and into the world as we pray for peace, for hope, and love in all of creation. Christ is always with us, the shepherd who offers sanctuary and peace, the gate that protects, and the one who calls us by name. We acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the First Peoples, the Anishinaabe Mississauga peoples with whom Treaty 20, the Williams Treaty, was signed on the lands where I am, and for continued wisdom and teaching to the descendants of settlers and newcomers. We also acknowledge the land and peoples of all the people who are connecting with us virtually. We seek to live in peace and friendship with all peoples and to continue to live into truth and reconciliation towards healing and right relationship. As you settle more deeply into this time of worship, I invite you to get comfortable where you are, center and ground yourself, sensing God's presence, grounded with the earth beneath you, opening yourself to God, praying in whatever way is most comfortable to you. I invite us to take a deep breath in together, feeling God's mighty presence filling us, and as we exhale, letting go of anxiety, tension, and stress. Breathe it in, and let it out into silence. Holy Wisdom, Holy Grace, we gather this day in your presence. Separate, yet together, we gather as community from the safety of our homes and thank you for this sacred time and space that we share. We gather open to the Spirit wherever it may move, open to you and the possibilities that you bring. May we receive you and may we respond in peace and thanksgiving. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Turning to our scripture, in Acts, we meet up with believers, discipled by the apostles who are building church, inviting people to be followers of the way. What we hear this morning gives a brief reflection into the early Christians' way of following the risen Lord in their life and in their work. I am reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47 from the Message Translation. They committed themselves to the teaching of the apostles, the life together, the common meal, and the prayers. Everyone around was in awe. All those wonders and signs done through the apostles and all the believers lived in a wonderful harmony, holding everything in common. They sold whatever they owned and pooled their resources so that each person's need was met. They followed a daily discipline of worship in the temple, followed by meals at home. Every meal, a celebration, exuberant and joyful, as they praised God. People in general liked what they saw. Every day, their numbers grew as God added those who were saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be open and acceptable to you, O God. Instill wonder and awe within us as we appreciate and give thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. What is your favorite food? It might be a main course or perhaps a decadent dessert. Whatever it is, imagine it. Picture it in your mind. Recall its smell, the taste, its texture, the way it makes you feel. How do you relate to enjoying that favorite food? Perhaps that food is something simple, something that you can enjoy every day, or maybe something you get only on a special occasion. Likely, what is important in your memory and making that connection of it is a favorite of this food is the story that you associate with it. The people who are important to you even if, in isolation, your love of that food probably links to some relationship connection. At my house, we've been celebrating at-home eating in new ways. Eating at home. A day and time is picked a common meal item decided upon, any recipes shared, and each at home we gather, our children and us, six in all, three households, our two daughters and their partners. This week we've managed three family meals, Laptop or iPad in a place of honor, meaning the camera sort of optimized, not by me. We break bread together. Cliff offers our blessing and we eat. We share. We visit. We compare what we've discovered at the bottom of our freezer or tucked in the back of the cupboard. All are fed. In this time, we are taking care of our bodies, but more importantly, in these meals, 
we're deepening relationships, nourishing ourselves mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. St. Teresa, known to most of us as Mother Teresa, is quoted as saying, if we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. Belonging to each other, connecting, caring about each other, it does give us peace to get through life's moments. Our dinners together, for my family, are such gifts. It's almost like being there. Almost. In our scripture story today, a little summary of early life of Jesus' ministry through the power of the Holy Spirit continues in the book of Acts. It's sort of the part two or sequel to the good news shared in the Gospel of Luke. The Jesus followers are finding their way in faith. Peter and the other apostles had to work hard to somehow create passion, commitment, devotion within these new believers to reflect their learning and their life with Jesus. They nurtured believers to connect with what it was like to live, eat, work, play, pray, and be with Jesus. And at some levels, they were nurturing. It's almost like being there. Almost. Through the stories of Jesus, we faithfully explore. We connect with what we understand his life was like and try to live our lives faithfully. In some ways, we are perhaps more like those new followers in this spring of 2020 than most of us have been in our lifetimes, mostly riveted by being at home more than ever before. At home, appreciating our bread, mindful to take care of each other, prioritizing what we need, what we can donate for others. As homes are refreshed and decluttered, our minds are opening up to reflect on our purpose and our priorities. We delight in things not noticed before or that we didn't have time for. Tasks getting done, new projects emerging, yards even getting a springtime makeover. Theologian Kate Matthews writes of the early church, the church flourished, counting more and more people as members, people who prayed together, shared their possessions, broke bread together, and devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles. She further writes, the commentators do not agree about this passage from Acts and whether its description of the early Christian community is idealized or not. But does that matter? Long ago in a far off land, our ancestors in faith did the same things we do today. They bore witness by doing the things that followers of Jesus are called to do. These are the characteristics that mark us as Christians, part of Christian communities devoted to the teachings of the apostles, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. We are to live with awe and wonder. We might not think of it that way, but our challenge is to turn our attention or our focus so that we might stop in the midst of everything 
that is coming at us, including even bad news and scary predictions. And to take notice, to take notice of the wonders and signs before us, we are to notice God's presence. What have you noticed today? We are over and over again creating connections, accepting situations of it's almost like being there, almost. Meetings through doors or windows, curbside no contact pickups, contact, sorry, contactless deliveries, talking with others at a designated distance, out in community, separated by floor markings for safe space, frontline workers who are hands-on but through protective gear, concerts offered virtually, virtual worship, virtual classrooms, virtual meetings and workload. It's almost like being there. Almost. Reaching out remains so creative, but those in need are being fed. Shelters are working hard. There's listening ears, financial caring, virtual and phone visiting, compassion. Our at home has become place of worship our table fellowship more creative, our hearts being stirred. When we share in virtual communion, we gather each with our own food and drink, but more sensitive and connected perhaps to the sense of gathering. And as St. Teresa conveys, the peace of being together the peace of belonging to each other. And sharing also her words, small things done with great love. We are invited to find the best within ourselves and to be our best selves. We will fall short of the perhaps idealized challenge of literally giving up everything or changing our ways. But in this season, we've been challenged to address what we give up, what we take on, what we embrace, and what we let go of. We are challenged to be more creative and to uphold providing care and comfort as best we can in our faith journey and our commitments, like sharing our favorite food, we connect with so much more. How are you connecting? Think about your week. What's been important? The awe, the wonder. Give thanks for those moments. It is deeper and goes beyond words. What will we continue to savor? I close with these words from Ruth Rachel. Pull up a chair. Take a taste. Come join us. Life is so endlessly delicious. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, help us to understand what you speak to us. Show us places in our lives where we need to be led. Open our hearts to compassion, gifts of love, generosity, forgiveness, and friendship. May we share all, appreciate, in wonder and awe. Holy friend and comforter, 
open us to find Christ in everyone, taking care of ourselves and of each other, breaking bread, sharing the bounty of our abundance at our table, virtual tables, and all the tables you reveal to us. Open us to hear Jesus calling us by name. Use us. Guide us in the outreach to others and the way we should live, the priorities we choose, and our words and actions that in your fold we are known. We are loved, cherished, and each your beloved child. In our hearts and on our lips, in your mercy, receive our joys. In our hearts and on our lips, in your grace, receive our concerns. In our hearts and on our lips, in your love, receive all of our prayers as we say together, the words Jesus shared with his friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go now in peace. Savor the love of God. Be nurtured by the leading of Jesus. Be forgiven and freed by the joy of the Spirit to live in faith, a beloved child of God. We are not alone. We will be okay. We are getting through this together. Until next time, stay home as much as you can. Save lives, stay safe, and stay well. God bless you. Amen.